What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and today, me and the Marsman crew review episode seven of the Last of Us TV series on HBO. And guys, honestly, the way that this video series works, you've been here before. The first half of the video is going to be our non-spoiler review, where we discuss our impressions about what happened, and we give our official ratings. And the second half of the video is going to be our spoiler discussion, where we talk about the big plot points of the episode and give our opinions about them. So let's just jump right into it. Our impressions, episode seven. To be honest, this was obviously a mirror after the DLC from the Last of Us video game. And uh, I thought they did a very good job on the dialogue between Riley and Ellie. I th thought overall, you can sense the chemistry there. They're, you know, obviously had a really good relationship but in the games. And I think in the show, they did a good job as well. And, and the point is, is that they emphasize that idea with the writing, right? The writing did a good job on kind of showing how like, you know, when, when you care about somebody and you know, it, it, it's you it, that it have that spark, right? And that they did that very well in this. And I think the the actress for Riley did a great job uh, doing you know doing this part. And obviously, Bella Ramsey's been do, has just been doing so well as Ellie this entire series. So you know, you got to give her a lot of credit uh, the way that she's been uh, you know portraying the character. And you know, I think the the episode was good overall. I mean, there were um, some you know we'll talk more about the spoilers later on, but I thought overall they did a good job of what they were trying to do they did good dialogue and it kind of made me you know uh, kind of just re reminisce about that dlc and i thought they did a great job overall so i want to get your guys input before we do our official ratings and uh Haki, i'll let you go first what were your impressions about what you saw yeah so i thoroughly uh, enjoyed this this episode i thought it was a good episode like you said the writing was good um and the chemistry between both riley and ellie uh, was definitely there you can see it throughout uh, I thought you can you, you can really see you know how vulnerable Ellie was, um, you know you didn't really get to see that uh, with the relationship between Joel and Ellie, so kind of got to see a different side of of Ellie, and um, you know you got to see how important that bond with Joel and Ellie uh, is right now because of what happened. You know we won't get into the spoilers, but what happened and, and Ellie said you know everyone that's um, that that's that, that I've loved has either left me or, or you know or, or died so you got to see how important that that true bond between uh joel and ellie is so yeah i, I do completely agree and uh Lagella kill man what did you feel about this this episode since we and you both played the games we've seen how the games portrayed it and now you kind of look at how the show does it how'd you feel about it yeah i thought this was a good episode and i think it was an important one now from the gaming side, I think this was the closest episode of a one-to-one to, -one to the game. Um, so I think this should make those gamers who played the DLC happy because this was very... This, I think, was the closest episode of pretty much practically being a mirror uh, to that DLC. And I thought this was also important because this episode and next episode, which we're not going to go into details, I feel is such an important uh, part for... Uh, the character Bella Ramsey playing Ellie because this episode is supposed to show and we've seen bits of it all season but Ellie is a second main character right she's not a side character to Joel Joel is a main character and Ellie's a main character and I thought Bella Ramsey did a really good job of kind of portraying a main character type person who can carry an episode and so I think this was a pretty strong episode there are some things um, that I do think you know I wish was done or could have been better, um, but overall a strong episode. Yeah, and so now we have to get to our official ratings, and I kind of want to get your guys' opinions first. Well, Jill Kill, I'm going to jump back to you first. What's your rating for this episode? Yeah, and I'm I want to apologize, guys. I'm going to rant a little bit because there were some things I made the big mistake. Usually, when I watch an episode, I usually watch it twice. And then I kind of go to some different content creators and see kind of what the other people think outside of our bubble. But I made the mistake of going on the internet and on Twitter to see what kind of people thought. And boy, what a big mistake I made because it kind of triggered me a little bit. And I'm, I'm going to give this an 8.5. And I know when people have been following our show is going to say, whoa, whoa, this was a big character development episode similar to that of three. And it's showing a love story. And there wasn't a lot of action similar to another episode um, that we saw previous. So why is this one higher? And the big factor I'm going to say is this is character development of a main character. And I do think that does separate from what we saw in episode three. And that's why it's higher for me 
um, that this gets a higher grade at 8.5. And also another thing about conflict is it, I understand making less conflict and less fighting, whether it's fighting people or infected, if the opportunity presents itself. And I thought last episode, they had a bigger opportunity for conflict, which they didn't take advantage of. But in this particular scenario, I understood why there was less and they had pretty good conflict at the end, although it wasn't a lot good conflict at the end and that's why i do think that it's at an 8.5 there is something we could talk about a spoiler that might make it a little bit higher if we see it going into the next episode but i'm at 8.5 um maybe i'll save the rant for at the end but uh <laughs> i, I kind of want to go at like there's a small group of gamers dude that i just don't understand when they bash on this i want to hear your guys grades but um when they really bash on this episode and they say stick to the game how much more do you want to stick to a game when it's practically one-to-one -one on this episode? Like, I don't understand the hatred for this episode when it's one-to-one -one and when they bring in love interests and they say, stick to the game. Like, these love interests are in the game you're telling on yourself. So there are some people out there that are content creators that I don't really understand their point of view when it comes to some of this stuff. So, uh, Haki, what's your rating for this one, man? Yeah, so I got it close to to, to Kill. I have it at an eight six, and I, I don't want to mirror exactly what uh, Langella Kill said, but it's pretty close. You know, I like I said, I, I didn't play the game, so I have nothing really to go off of uh, to compare it to. But uh, I really enjoyed the the character development that uh, we saw Ellie go through. You know, um, she's always been a smartass. You know, I mean, she's been a smartass throughout the entire time, and she still was. You know, you can. You, you can tell from the interactions she's had with, I think it was like the drill sergeant or, or whomever she was talking to. And we'll get into that later. But, um, you know, she's always been uh, that type of person, kind of stubborn. But you did get to see, you know, that, like I said, that vulnerability um, with Riley. So, like Langella Kill said, it was very, very much a character development uh, type of episode. It still had a little bit of conflict. Um, a little bit of emotional conflict as well. And then it's still, you know, I don't want to get into the spoilers, but you still did get to see, you know, um, you know, an infected. Um, again, don't want to spoil it too much, but you got to see a lot of different uh, things and, and you got to see really how Ellie and a lot of people that weren't born outside of the QZ, how they react to, to very, very small, simple things that, you know, a, a regular person you know wouldn't be surprised about so it was a very very cool episode and i, I thoroughly enjoyed it see the, the thing about me with this episode is that it it does a very good job of staying close to the games and i already knew what was going to happen and i was i was glad to see that they did stick to the you know the game because there's not really that much you can really deviate from the game from this scenario because it's like what else are you going to really change right and i think when i'm looking at this it's not a bad episode it's it's better than i think i'd put it in the midway of this of the whole show itself i'd probably put it as out of seven at the moment i place it's the fourth best episode you know what i mean i think it, i put it at four uh compared to some of the other ones i thought that would rise above that one so far so i think i'd probably have it around like a seven seven and a half i think 7.5 this seems like a pretty good ranking for me because you know I, I i do agree that there are people out there that are just gonna rag on it because it's a an episode that focuses on you know just talking or just this development between characters but there's a big difference between episode three which was a development of characters that don't really have much impact on the plot versus a character like ellie and riley which ellie is one of the main characters and gives you context of her character and why she is who she is right same thing with joel right in episode one being so pivotal overall to his development right and and that's the key thing here, right? I think this episode did a great job of giving Ellie context to who she is. And that's why I can give her, give this episode props. But I don't think, it, I think there are some things you can definitely add to make it better. But the point is, is that it's it's a copy of the, of the game, right? The, the DLC of the game was great. But there were some, there were like, obviously there's not a lot of conflict going, right? So and I think that's kind of like, I'm not going to downgrade it because I have conflict. It's more just, I feel like they did better than... The ep all the other episodes that were character development. Episodes. I feel like th this was the best one of those. So I think it's better than the first episode of the Henry and Sam. I think it's better than episode three. I think it's better than Wyoming. I think it's better than all of those, right? But it's I, it doesn't top the first episode. It doesn't top the second. And it does not top the Henry and Sam episode, which I think is the, the final finale of Kansas City, which I gave, I think, is my highest rated episode. So I think it's there. It's four, right, for me. So 7.5 for me. 
Um, but yeah, uh, I, that's going to be it for our non-spoiler review of the episode. And let us know what you think about episode seven and place that in the comments below. And make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you like this type of content and you want to support the channel going forward. You can join us on Twitch where we stream at least two to three times a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and we always have a wild card day in between or on the weekend. And you can always join us on all of our socials located in the description below. But now we're going to jump to our spoiler section where we're going to discuss the major plot points. If you want to keep watching, you'll see you there. All right, now on to spoilers. Well, guys, spoiler section here. And this was, I thought, like I said in the in the previous section, this was my fourth favorite episode of all of them. And that's not, that's not a downgrade. The whole entire show has been doing well. It just means it is my fourth of the seven so far. But I think they did a good job of tying right into the last ending, which showed the university and showing how Joel got stabbed. He was gravely injured. A lot of people, I think, including Haki, was like, dude, does he die like that? And we're like, no, I, I even I, I even to people I talked to um, outside my, like my girlfriend's brother asked like because he was watching the show and was like oh you're watching Last of Us and he was like he he was even tempted like does Joel die and I was like well I could tell you if you want but he's like no nah, nah, nah. but I was like if people got surprised if they didn't know the game they're like oh no like is he dead yeah. and yeah. they did a good job tying right into the next part because it shows really Joel is struggling right he's. He's fading, and he's even telling Ellie, like, get out of here. Just go, leave me to die. And Ellie's like, no, I'm not letting you die. And he's, she's trying to find ways to, to help him. But she hits a, a flashback moment. And this is when she was in the QZ, QZ facility, and she was training in the uh, in the schools, basically, where she, where, you know, that's how we first met her um, when, you know, she was with Marlene. Uh, and, ba uh, and basically, at this point, she gets in trouble with fighting, uh, I forgot the girl's name, um, she, she gets to fist. Beth like Beth yeah, Bethany gets to do a fist fight. Bethany over her Walkman, and the officer kind of gives her a lecture, saying, "Hey, listen, you have a leader in you. Like we see bright things in your future, but you got to stay along the course, right? You have to be where you know doing the right thing, and you'll end up being someone that will be a leader in this in the Fedra you know offices, and that would be a big deal for you." Now she's like, you know, she has this the feeling like, yeah, she's going to be doing all right like in the long run. But in the, in the long run, you can sense that there's some sadness there. And the big thing that you can see is that when when Riley's, when Riley shows up, which is Ellie's friend, you know, she gets happy again because she sees her best friend there. And, you know, Riley left basically to, you know, and you'll learn more why she left later on in the episode. But she leaves and she came came back. You find out she joined the Fireflies um, by you know, uh, basically saying like, you know, I met this woman and, you know, she, she saw some, some things, some skills I have and says, Hey, you'd be a lot, you'd be a great part of the fireflies and, and welcomed her in. And she promises Ellie, listen, come out with me tonight. We're gonna have the funnest night of your life. I can guarantee it. And, uh, that's when they go They're you know, they're joking around. They find a guy who died by mixing alcohol and drugs together. They take that's his fair. alcohol. Um, and but this, I just want to get your opinion real quick before you keep going. Both of you guys, how do you think of this? I th I really love this part um, because on the dialogue side because it's kind of humanizing the two sides, right? Fedra and the Fireflies, and it's like both of them think the other is bad, and like it's not like black and white. Like, oh, this is the bad group, this is the good group. It's like you could see, like you talked about in previous episodes, the perception kind of tells you who's good and bad, and yeah. like they each have their own good. And you've seen in multiple different areas of bad as well. So, like, I really like that. I don't know what your guys thought before we keep going well, on to the summary. That, but I thought I like the that it, there's not a designated good guy and a designated bad guy. Like, there's good and bad that they based on what perspective you're at. Yeah. And that was kind of the part we're getting to because the, the thing is, is that in Last of Us, it's about the theme, right? That's the, always the theme of what Last of Us is, is that there's never a clear-cut villain and good guy right in this entire entire game series it's always about perspective your perspective versus somebody else like you're the you're the the hero in your story versus they're the villain in your story and it's the same way around to the to flip of the coin that's why you know in the games whenever you like kill somebody like everyone else around like the guards would be like oh no like johnny's dead like to them johnny's their boy right and you just killed their boy in their story so you're a villain to them Right, and you can saw that especially in the, uh, the I think it was the episode with uh, with the first section of Kansas City where they they had to kill that kid. Right, it was a kind of like a young adult basically. Like they had to kill that guy who was attacking him, but he was like calling for his mom. Like, you know, he's 
he's a he's just a younger guy. Like, you know, what I mean, he's just in the city thinking that someone's invading them, right? You know, like to them, you're the villain, you're the invader, right? But to you, like they're the marauder, right? So, the, I, yeah, I thought they did a good job here because it does kind of bring like the two youths of both both sides, kind of like what their perspective is on each side. Hockey, you you can give your opinion, man, uh, about how you felt about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just uh, very opinionated. You know, it's just pretty much pick a side. You're going to do bad. You're going to do good. Um, and, you know, and, and hopefully you do more good than than bad with the with the side you choose. So I totally totally get that. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, because the thing is, is that you know, in the in this part, they were joking around like, hey, it, well, you know, your guys are just Nazi terrorists, and the other ones like, well, you guys are just killing innocent people all the time, and they just start joking like, basically, screw it, screw you, no, screw you, and. And they keep using that same verb, they same joking around method the entire time. And then they finally get to the location where Riley wanted to bring Ellie, and it was a mall, right? And the mall basically, and she's like, Ellie's like, yo, we we can't be here, right? This is where they blocked off everything. It's a, you know, it's it's filled with infected. That's what they said. And Riley's like, oh, is it? Like, it looks fine to me. And the secret thing you find out in the background is that this is actually a stronghold for the Firefly. So it's kind of about perspective. Like, Riley basically said to, to Ellie, like, you, you just don't know everything. Like, you think you know what's going on, but you really don't, right? And it's, it's you say the same thing about Riley, too. Like, yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she doesn't know everything that the Fireflies do. Like, you yeah. saw how bad the Fireflies can treat people in the first episode of the show, where in the they're middle of the street, place. yeah, yeah or they're they're in the middle, for the part, Tess gets, basically almost gets killed because the Fireflies blow up a bomb in the middle of the street with random civilians, right? And they don't really care about that. They're just trying to go out to Fedra. And it's the same thing. But the point is, though, is that as as this is going on, you find, like they kind of, you know, Riley says, oh, I'm going to, uh, you know, she turns on the generator. He's not going to show you the, the four wonders of the world. And uh, the first one, they, they they call it the fifth wonder. It's uh, the yeah. escalator. And yeah. I think Bella, Bella Ramsey does a great job at, like, pretending like she has no idea what the hell any of these things are. Because it's like, obviously, yeah. Ellie was not born during the time of being able to see any of these things. She was already, she was born right into this situation. So she was blocked off right from the beginning. Um, but then they go to the merry-go-round where, you know, they, they, uh, you know, they ride the merry-go-round and they and kind boozing. of, <laughs> and yeah, they're boozing at the same they're time. Boozing and they, I mean, sure. That's a, that's a great time. Go boozing and go on the merry-go-round. <laughs> yeah, cranberry vodka, you know, yeah, cranberry vodka is <laughs> on the merry-go-round. Um, but you find out that Riley basically ran away because, she got given the, the job of being sewage detail and she was basically going to be the one that be, would be watching the sewers watching the crap tunnels for Fedora for the for the qz and she got spooked and ran away and she told the story basically marlene like and she dropped the name marlene saw me sneak around and out of the out of the base and she was impressed that of what she was able to do and I basically accepted her as a firefly um, and then they started jumping into a bunch of other places like the photo booth and the arcade where yeah. uh, you get a little, they play Mortal Kombat and, and yeah. all these other games, which is pretty funny. Um, but what was important is that you could see that there's there's an infected in the mall still. And this is from the arcade. You see this. Uh, the la the then she gives Ellie uh, the book volume two of the pun book, which is the book that she actually has with her when she's with Joel. Like, so that was one of the gifts that she has along with her. Um and then this is where things kind of turn to the bad. Ellie finds bombs that Riley had either yeah, pipe bombs that either Riley made or was holding as storage in this area. And uh, you know they they fight over the whole debate over the Firefly saying, "Hey, so this is the this is the good guys that you're telling me about? They have these pipe bombs here, you know?" And and you know, right. as that uh, she wouldn't let them. Bomb she, I won't let them bomb Ellie. your your area, bomb you yeah, or bomb around your area. Like, how do you know? Like, how do you know they won't make yeah, you do that, right? Like, yeah, how, yeah. How, how naive can you be yeah. if, you, if you're thinking that that's, that's what's going to happen? Like, you could stop that from happening. And you find out, really, the real real thing that's going on with Riley is that she wanted to give Ellie, like, the best night because it'll be the last time she ever sees her, basically. She's, she's been redeployed to go to Atlanta to basically go and try to stop that area from within. And, you know, Ellie's... You know, she asked Ellie she wants to go with her, and she says no. Like, I'm not going to well, join. Marlene, Marlene said she won't let her. Well, yeah, that was a mixture yeah. between she asked Marlene. Marlene says, no, you can't. And, yeah. you know, and she at the same time, Ellie even asked, like, hey, you should just stay here. And, you know, she's like, no. And she's only here to say goodbye. And, and Ellie pieces, right? But then she, she comes back. Eventually, she kind of forgets. She kind of, like, just lets it. 
like lets it settle for a moment. She or goes maybe back. She's going back to the book. She wants the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she wants just the book. But she goes back, and the fifth wonder is the scary room, like the haunted room with all the stuff. And um, they start dancing on top of the thing, and, and they eventually, uh, you know, they have that moment, and Ellie kisses Riley, showing her like emotions that she she cares more than just being a best friend. And I'm sure at this point, every every one of those people, like you know, Last of Us always gets gets those people that are mis like misogynistic or you know an anti you know anti like bisexual or or homosexual like feelings they came out like in full force <laughs> blew up all over the media um because once they saw that once they saw that they're like hey, this is the worst thing i've ever seen even though like think this about is this, yo. i'm sorry to interrupt this got voted the lowest rated episode of all the episodes on imbd it's ridiculous i don't know how First off, first off, oh, wow. I'm sorry to to burst everyone's bubble, but this was in the game, right? This is, <laughs> this was in the game. This was a this was this came out back in 2014, right? Like, this is not brand new. This concept, all right? This happened 2013's official game release, but the DLC came out 2014, 2015. This has been a long time. This has been out yeah. there for right, yeah. and you know, I yeah, when it first happened, I was like, oh, and the scene, the scene yeah. is almost identical. It's, it's identical exactly. to the game. So my my point is like, yeah, when it first dropped, I was like. Oh, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know that Ellie had those feelings. And then I was like, okay. And then when the second game, and we'll talk, obviously, that day will come. But the second game comes out, you're like, that, this wasn't a shock. Like, when people are shocked at what happens in the second game, you're like, I'm not shocked. Because if you, and, you knew the DLC, you're like, yeah, clearly, yeah. And, you know. And this is the part that bothers me, guys. Because, you know what? I'm uncomfortable when they do these long, drawn-out, like, sex scenes. Like, similar to the third one. It wasn't the worst I've ever seen. But, like, it was drawn out, and it can be uncomfortable. Right, even when it's whatever. There's a Game of Thrones the same way when they when yeah, they do any yeah, like sex like, scenes like that. This was just a kiss. It's just a this kiss, was with, not like drawn out. I know it's it ridiculous. Was so fast, and that's the part where I'm like, why is this a big deal? It's not. Yeah, it's it really, really not. Is. It's really not. It really it, it, at the end of the day, it's just people. I don't, I don't get. It. I want to jump into the the dark, the well yeah. of whatever. The I don't want this dumb BS. I'm just watching a good show. That's all I want. Good I, show. I, at good, the end of the day, like episode. at the end of the day, people that bring it, bring that up as a reason why they don't like the episode is just stupid. Like they, if you can you can criticize the episode for for any reason you want, but yeah. if that's the reason why that you don't like the episode, there's something you wrong. Some, right? you there's something problems. Wrong. Yeah, yeah, there's some yeah. there's some problems here. But <laughs> essentially, from this part, you know, every Last of Us always falls in a spot where every time something good's going on, right? There's always <laughs> a bad thing going on. Right? There's yeah. never a moment of. Like even playing the games, you you're like everything's going well. Like there's something bad that's <laughs> gonna happen <laughs> that's gonna screw everything up because it never just ends the right way. And essentially that's what happens where Ellie and Riley get chased by an infected. They both fight them off in some degree, but you find out that both of them were bitten, right? And you know, and yeah, obviously they they kind of sit there and they're like, well, you know, Ellie's really angry. Riley kind of just accepts it, like. It's gonna like we're gonna die, right? And she's like, "Well, there's two options: either, you know, we take we take each other out, which is an option I don't want to do, right, to end it now, or we just we live our lot, we just live until we die, right? Some people and it happens in ten minutes, some people it happens in hours. Let's just live in the moment for right now and see what happens. And they cut away, right? Just like in the DLC, they cut away to the moment where Ellie is now trying to save Joel. And she finds a kit and sews the wound and essentially saves oh, him. No. But it is pretty <laughs> they really brutal. Show the wound. They really show the <laughs> wound and she sews the wound. And, and this is exactly what happens to DLC in the game and stuff like that. So she sews the wound and saves his life. And that's how the episode ends. Now, some things that you can go into would be, you know, should they have shown what happened between Ellie and Riley? As in, like, do, you know, was, does, does, Ellie and Riley, like, do they kind of, um, you know, they both live out the moment when, when it, when they turn, right? And then yeah. I like, do like, you know, does the we assume because of uh, the fact that you know Ellie tells Joel like, hey, you know, I it's not the first time I've yeah. had to do this. You assume that when yeah. Riley turns, Ellie has to kill her, right? And yeah. and you assume that that's what she meant by that's the only person I've had to kill. Was yeah. her best friend the the person who she cared about more than anybody, and and that's where it's messed up. I mean this this episode's a messed up episode because it's just like episode three. I mean, granted, you know I I think episode three for me was probably on the lower scale of ratings because 
I felt like it's fine to change up a story if you're keeping characters similar. And I thought I liked the way they made it a little happier between what happens with Bill yeah. and Frank from the game. Um, but my downside of episode three was that they focused way too long on a relationship that in the grand scheme of it doesn't really have as much impact on the on the entire series, right? If Bill and Frank are key characters from episode one and then this is what happens to them, that's different. But you know, what happens with Ellie and Riley, even though Riley's a new character, but Ellie is a main character yeah. that you know has such so much impact on the show and in game entirely. So knowing her context, knowing what makes her the way she is is important right and and that's why like she i like the episode because it shows you because she said like you know i i i was scared i'm scared when i'm not with the people i care about like with i lost yeah, she's everybody afraid to be alone. she's, afraid, I, I'm, she's to be afraid to be alone people people everyone she's cared about have either left or died right and you know that's why that scene from the wyoming which is one of the best scenes in all the show in the games about you know when they have that like kind of argument and you know she says like i'm only get scared when you're not there now right and so how can i live on if i'm not with you and you know that that's a po powerful scene and it only makes it more powerful when you see this right in the games you didn't have this dlc in the beginning you had this dlc after the game was officially released yeah, yeah. so it's like if you had this like that's why the show is doing it well because you cut to that part and now it's like you can understand why she feels that way like what makes her tick and I think that's what the best part of it is, right? I think for people that rag on the show diverting from the game, there's not much you can say about this one diverting, right? The only thing that was different was the amount of infected that attacked them at the end, right? It was in the game, yeah. it was multiple infected. In this one, it was one, right? And whatever. At the end of the day, the same result happens, right? They, you know... They both get bitten just like the game and they both get infected well ellie's can't get infected but and they, riley can get they, yeah, they, yeah what you yeah, think and stuff like that you know but the point is, is that like that's what happened exactly from the game and i thought they did a good job of the episode the dialogue was great and they they did exactly what they set out to do right that that was the key thing you have a goal you set out and accomplish that goal right so um hockey i'll let you go first and then i'll let langella kill do it do his rant to destroy all all those uh, content creators and Twitter Twitter users. So, Aki, what did you feel about overall of the episode based on the, all the plot points? Yeah, so like I said before, I uh, thoroughly enjoyed this episode. I thought the five wonders, it was four, I believe, but then turned into five when she first saw the Escalade. Yeah. That, that's been one of my favorite parts about Ellie and, and the actress that's playing her is that she does, like you said, Marsman, she does a very good job at pretending or just showing the emotion of someone who literally does not know what life was like or is like uh, or is like outside of the qz you know she was born there or she was a child there so she has no idea um you know what it used to be like so just an escalator seeing you know a photo booth you know video games that were up uh, on our wall as a poster um the carousel all those things and all the raw emotion that she showed uh was very uh, not surprising but it was um it was i almost felt happy for her, you know that she finally saw something um that made her happy and she was enjoying her one night um with riley so again i, I didn't play the video game so i don't know exactly how it went you guys are saying that it was almost identical to the video game which is good you know it's a uh, very good video game so the story as long as it stays close to the video game should be uh you know a very good story and continue to be a very good story like you said mars man i would have liked to see what happens right after they got bit i i want to know how i think it's marlene right the the head firefly girl i want to see how marlene found um ellie and like you know that conversation of hey me and riley got bit and you know she turned i had a killer you know some type of conflict or some type of um you know dialogue there i think i would have liked to see that but all in all the episode was very enjoyable for me um and again it gives you that um that that idea or it shows you why ellie uh, would be so scared to uh leave joel when once they go back to you know real life and she decides not to walk out the door she decides to go get you know that that uh, yarn or, or that string with the needle and start fixing them up so it shows you how important that bond between joel and ellie are and um yeah i mean i, I think it was just a good episode and uh, i can't wait for next episode i'm a little confused with with what was going on in the trailer the next episode i'm sure you guys oh boy 
But uh, yeah, I, know, I, I don't know. If a, you guys are saying this oh, is going to be a test, mean, dude. Does that mean the hospital is coming up or something like that? Uh, <laughs> or, uh, or no? Well, well, listen. There's two episodes left. And yeah, I'll, yeah, let me let Angelo Kill go into yeah, his yeah. rant. Spoiler. Let me go. Let Angelo Kill go into his rant, and I'll set up the yeah. premise of the well, last you know, two episodes. Having you guys talk about it, I think I've calmed down a little bit. I was a bit fired up before. Um, but I agree with you guys on this. I think I'm not going to, it doesn't hurt the episode for me that I didn't see, um, that clip of what happens afterwards when they get bit, but I would have given it brownie points if they did. Cause again, the game didn't do it. So I can't punish them for not doing it, but I would have given them some brownie points if they went ahead and showed exactly what you guys described is Ellie putting down Riley or the fireflies having to put down Riley in some capacity. Um, and how that interaction went. Um, maybe they showed at the beginning of next episode, but again, time is of the essence. So I don't even know if that's going to happen. So again, we're going to see about that, but I agree with a lot of what you guys said. The part that really annoys me, listen, you give this episode a seven, you give it an eight, you give it a nine, you know, anything in between, I can understand the different points of view of why people, are, you know, have kind of, maybe this wasn't, that entertaining for you, right? Especially if you didn't play the game, so you can't appreciate how much they copied it. Um, I understand that. I just don't understand the one, twos, and threes. Like, and when you go and say, hey, stick to the game, stop getting political, like this is content from the game. That's the part that drives me crazy. And when you see some of these gamers who are just slamming on this show, like the hope is that more shows that take IPs do similar things to what Last of Us is doing. That's the kind of part that annoys. Are you going to, like, is this the standard that we want? Like, we want them to be close to the game, don't we? That's what we want. We should be celebrating episodes like this, even if it's not the most entertaining, because they're staying close to the game, right? I understand people ragging when they go off it and it's not a great idea. I get that. When they're close to the why are you ragging on it? And then when we start talking about, pot, like, guys, this is getting stupid, especially if you call yourself, you know, a video game fan. Like, this is stuff you should like right this is stuff that you should be happy because you want this to stretch out to other ips which we have seen that are afraid to go into that content and so yeah. that's why i just don't understand some of these people's views i get it you want to give it a seven it wasn't entertaining i get all that but the one twos and threes and you're talking about the kiss you're talking about love interest you're talking about you know stick to the game you're telling on yourself when you get into that that's all I got to say about that. Or you I didn't mean, really play the game. <laughs> that's a point. Like, you're telling, you're 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 telling you yourself that you're, you're, like, you're like, oh, you should stick to the game. Like, well, this is as close to the game as, as you can get. You know what I mean? But like, that's the on. thing. Yeah, but I agree. I mean, at the end of the day, like, I, I gave it my rating is my fourth favorite because I think the it other is. ones and all the ones emphasize I'm not conflict. bagging up. No, no, I, I know. I know. Anything seven between nine, I get that. You give it a seven and a half. But I don't understand the one, twos, and threes. And people yeah, can have yeah. people can have whatever opinions they want. I mean, I'm not telling you how to think, but don't say stick to the game then. Don't say stick to the game because that's what they did. You're lying. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, at the end of the day, when we look at the last two episodes of the season, there's gonna be a lot of stuff that happens. There's gonna be a lot of crazy stuff that's gonna go down. And uh I'm looking forward to see how they how they accomplish the feat of getting this amount of content done in two episodes it's because gonna be it's going to be tough. It's going to be interesting to see how they do it, but I think it's going to be great television no matter what, right? Whether it's an hour, an hour, 10, hour, 20, whatever time span they're going to do for these last two, it's going to be entertaining. There's some good storylines dropping here, some good conflict that's going to come about from this part. And the last two episodes is if not all conflict, it's, it's majority of it's going to be a lot of conflict. So that kind of sets up for the last two episodes, and we'll talk about that when we get there. But if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. What do you think about the episode? I want you to put that in the comments below. Join us on Twitch. We stream at least two to three times a week, and that's also located in the description below. And join us on all of our socials, also located there as well. Until next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming signing off. Peace out, guys.